Welcome to TikTok with uh, Laku Chidimbero. Uh, I have here on our webcast uh, Shibani Joshi, who's a national technology journalist uh, who's covered business, um, technology, and news uh, for a variety of global media outlets such as uh, ABC News, uh, Fox Business Network, Fox News Channel, Yahoo Finance, Reuters, Huffington Post. Um, and, and truly exciting that she's reported extensively from the uh, uh, floor of the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, uh, NYMEX, and, and, and covered a, a range of stories, good and, and bad, and good, bad, and the ugly, like I like to think about, uh, about Bernie Madoff and Sully Sullenberger and Steve Jobs. So uh, a, a great fun to have her. And, 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 and if this isn't enough, her credentials include an MBA from Harvard, um, and of course, what we are very proud of, she's a graduate of, of the University of Oklahoma as well. Uh, welcome, Shabani. Uh, thank you. Nice to be here. This is wonderful to be chatting with you. And, and so you've had such an interesting life story, a, a, such a, an interesting sort of pathway to success. And, and you're uh, this incredibly accomplished journalist, uh, uh, an entrepreneur. Um, would you care to tell us a little bit about, about that journey uh, that, that you've been through? Absolutely. You know, I, I didn't start out to be a, a journalist. I, I learned to be one. Um, but my initial dream and desire was to work on Wall Street. And that's what I wanted to do. I grew up in Oklahoma and I had watched, um, you know, the movies de depicting people on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And I just felt like, wow, that's so exciting. I want to be able to do that. Um, when I was at OU, I studied business and I studied pre-med because as a, as a daughter of Indian parents, I thought I should be a doctor. Um, and I took my pre-read requirements, but I was never really that good at chemistry. Um, and I, I was doing well in all my classes except for chemistry. And I was making C's in chemistry when I was making A's in other classes. And I kept trying and kept trying. And then I just sort of realized by my junior year of college that if I'm making a C in organic chemistry, I'm putting, I'm setting myself up for a long, hard road of not being great at something. I think I thought I could be a, a good doctor, but the pathway and the learning would have been very challenging for me. Um, whereas my uh, business coursework just came so much more naturally to me. And I think that that's kind of been my guidepost for um, uh, uh, how I've, I've managed my career is using my strengths as the basis for, for my choices, not to say that everything comes naturally to me. I still have to work every day and I work all the time, but using my strengths as the first place um, for making my decisions and um, going to Wall Street. So I worked really hard and I knocked on doors and I um, did informational interviews my senior year at OU and I got that job at Morgan Stanley in New York. And, um, and it was everything I wanted it to be until it wasn't, until I was working a, a hundred hours a week and I was, you know, locked in boardrooms and, and inside my office, you know, Friday night at 10 o'clock. Um, and while there was a thrill and, and exhilaration, it re really wasn't fueling my passions. And so um, I had the opportunity to stay a third year there and um, actually go to Hong Kong because I wanted to go abroad. And instead of doing that, I decided to take a year off, use the, you know, they, they pay you really well. It was one of the reasons that I had some leeway um, and I decided to travel. So I spent um, a year just traveling and, and I went across Asia because I knew that if I stayed a third year at Morgan Stanley and went to Hong Kong, I just would have been in an office building and I wouldn't have had that experience of traveling. And so I traveled and I went all across Asia and India and I just did a lot of self introspection and I came back to New York. Um, ironically, I came back on September 10th, 2011. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember choosing a seat on a certain side of the plane because when you fly mm -hmm. into LaGuardia, you fly right by um, Lower Manhattan and Wall Street, and I remember seeing um, the World Trade Center towers. And mm -hmm. the next morning, I woke up, and it was 9/11. So, um, and then the world changed. But um, you know, there's always things like that that are happening. Now we're in the middle of COVID. Um, but to make a long story short, you know, after that, I what I had come back to New York to do was merge my interest in in business and media. 
So I got a job at CNN and I took an entry level job, a production assistant job. Um, and I was rolling a teleprompter for Lou Dobbs and, you know, all these uh, people that were on TV, but you have to start somewhere. And I was not super thrilled about it. I had to wake up at three in the morning to work on the 6 a.m. shows. Um, that was not glamorous. And that's certainly not the TV life that you think that it might be. But I paid my dues and I did that for about a year. And I also applied to business school. And that's what took me to Harvard. And then I came back and I, and I continued to progress onto this path of merging my interests with what I'm good at, um, media and business. And that's kind of been the hallmark of my career. I worked at ABC News on the business side, but eventually took the leap and um, started to work on TV. And now that's what I do now. I do business, I do technology, and I uh, merge everything in a way that um, I feel is unique and, and contributes a viewpoint. That's fascinating. Uh, the one thing I just loved about um, your story, uh, Shibanya, and, and your bio, looking through it, you know, you talked about knowing when to take big risks mm -hmm. and, and sort of a corollary to that, which, which you, you know, you talked about that as well, knowing when to leave. Mm -hmm. and so these are, are, are important sort of inflection points in, in you know, in somebody's life. And, and so I wonder if you can give us some examples about that, because I think that's not emphasized enough. You know, we we just sort of stay. I mean, you talk about our parents' generation where they stayed with their same employer for, for their yeah. whole life, for example. And, and, and so I, I wonder if you can care to elaborate on that. Yeah, for me, my opposite challenge is like, how long can I hold on to a job for? Two years, four years, six years. I And my parents, you know, walked in one building for their first job and then left retiring that, from that same job. It was a, a big paradigm shift in this um, generation. And so, um, you know, I, I'm not afraid of taking big risks. It doesn't mean that I am um, a risk taker. I think that's different. I take very calculated and prepared risks. So if I think back to a couple examples with trying to get that job at Morgan Stanley, I took internships at places that um, I knew would be recognized by the big banks. Um, I worked in a big city the summer before. I worked in Chicago um, to show that you know I, I I have you know I can work in a cosmopolitan environment. I know how to work in big business and big cities. I did some calculated things. I you know I drove down to Dallas and I interviewed with people that worked in the you know the Dallas and the Houston offices for the big banks that I wanted to work at got my foot in the door there. I mean, I did things very strategically. Um, it was still risky, but I had had I'd placed those bets. I placed them on myself and I placed them on other people to help ensure that happened. And I did that also with breaking into TV. I mean, um, all of us have heard the stories of what it takes to break into TV. You move to small markets and you work your way. Well, I didn't want to do that. I, th I thought there was a, a different way for me using my strengths again. And so I there I was, an MBA working um, inside the headquarters of ABC News in New York City, working on business development and strategy and creating new products for the news company, news division. And so I networked within the organization and said, you know, you're launching this online news network. Can I be on TV? And they said, sure, our studios and the broom closet, literally um, the broom closet with a green screen behind it and nobody's watching it. So go for it. And so I stayed late after work and I practiced there. And then at night I took um, journalism classes at the new school and at NYU. And I would practice doing stand-ups on Sixth uh, Avenue and, and 8th Street and, you know, interview people. And every time I went on vacation somewhere, I brought my camera and, 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 and took videos and I practiced. And then on the weekends, I um, took odd and end jobs as well, trying to do TV stuff. And it was all of that strategic planning um, that allowed me when the time was right to take the risk to uh, find an agent and then eventually go work to Fox. But I had to put in the sweat equity beforehand and did so for years. And so, yes, I, I do take big risks, but I also put in that sweat equ equity and prepare um, for months, if not years in advance. And I think that that is the 
it's what's hidden beneath the surface and in a lot of people's success stories is that you see Elon Musk and all of these people and you say, oh, they're just so successful and or maybe they had things handed to them or they got lucky and probably some of those things are true. But there was also years and years of hard work and dedication and failure. You know, I had plenty of doors shut on me, plenty of people that said no. You know, we're not going to hire you. You're you're too green to be on TV. Um, plenty of investment banks that shut the door on me, but all you need is is one person to say yes. You know, really. Yes. Oh, that's sure. And, and I think in in this in this idea in this book too, he talks about this notion of happiness. You know, where where time stops and you're doing things that you love, which which is something that you've talked about. Um, you know, and it's not necessarily the same thing all the time. It's certainly not the same no. thing for different people. Um, and, and I think one of the, the things with your, with our talk thus far, you know, the timing is so critical. You know, you always, you talk about, you know, when to take the big risk or when to leave. And so the timing's a big issue and you, you've, you've navigated that pathway very well. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I try, I try. <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, you know, I, I think this is a really unusual time that we're living in and nobody knows quote unquote, when it's going to end and what's going to come out of it. But I think um, this is a great time to take risks because you, you kind of have nothing to lose. The world is turned upside down anyways, and you might as well take that risk because um, we, we probably have no better time for it because we have more time. We're not commuting here and there. We don't have the distractions that we had. I mean, obviously there are strains on resources, which is a huge issue and concern over the long term for everybody. But um, I'm using this time to pivot and and experiment, and I'm I'm doing it on social media. I'm writing a lot more. I'm experimenting with different ways of creating content. I'm um, you know, this whole virtual platform has exploded. I mean, who knows, you know, part of what I did was, was facilitate meetings at big companies and talk on stages. And I can't, I don't know when we're gonna see a stage again. So how do you pivot in that environment? And that's one of the things I'm exploring. And there are a lot of online events now that are starting to take place and they, um, and you still need people who are, are um, knowledgeable and skilled at, you know, communicating. And so I'm trying to, pivot my business in terms of that. And then, you know, I have three kids at home too. So we're trying to right. figure out this juggling a bunch of different things. And, and on different days, you know, I was having a conversation yesterday with somebody with a good girlfriend who is also very accomplished, has children went to Wharton, you know, all these things. And, you know, we laughed and we said, if you told us 10 years ago, 15 years ago that, you know, anything less than 90, 95% we'd, we'd be okay with, we would have said, you're crazy. We're 100, 110% kind of gals. Now we joke, we're like 50, 55% is good enough. <laughs> 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 but we can get yeah. to 55 of what, of, of what we want in a day or what we, of our to-do list or, you know, of, of working out or doing whatever, that's pretty good. So <laughs> in lowering the bar, there's also more room for success. And that is, um, something that I'm learning and, and uh, growing into every single day too. Sure. And I think you already have the platform. I love the Shibani on tech, um, you know, the blog that you have and the posts. And, and so is that something that, that will be part of this as you move forward, um, Shibani? Yeah, I think so. I think the other thing that I would like to talk about is um, this balance of personal um, authenticity and professional excellence. I think everybody, you know, one of the things that I, I, I'm doing now, and, and you know this because you helped me um, I get this position was I'm teaching, you know, through it to the executive MBA program at, at the Price College. And we're exploring concepts of bringing our whole selves to work. Do we bring our whole selves to work, which is do we live double lives, the life that we are at home or with our friends versus the, the, the people that we are at work? And for the majority of us, we are not our whole selves. We splinter ourselves and we feel like we put on an act of this is what a professional person needs to be. And um, that's not sustainable. And I, I don't think that that's people. I think we're in a, a, an incredible environment right now where people are wanting more authenticity, um, are wanting to have difficult conversations, are wanting to express more of who they are. And I'm in this space of exploring also like um, 
you know, I don't think everybody should just give up their day jobs and go meditate all day or, you know, go do yoga or whatever. But I enjoy doing that when I'm not at work. But I still want to be excellent and world class at whatever it is that I do. So how do I balance the two? And uh, I don't think a lot of people are talking about that enough, this balance. And, and that's my peer group is, you know, a lot of my friends are, you know, they're running companies and they have ideas and they're launching things. But they also have kids and they worry about their health and they care about you know their aging parents and they want to feel purposeful in their life so how do you balance the two and have those conversations and that's one of the things that i am experimenting with right now is um in this audience of people that i'm connected to in tech and in business bringing up these other concepts of a more purposeful enriching life and trying to marry the two and have conversations within that circle because often you'll have them in different circles but i think the point is to have them in the in the circles that you work people with high degrees of emotional intelligence. So emotional intelligence translates into authenticity, about empathy, all of these quote unquote soft skills that you, you think are not relevant or not related to you know, top leaders. But in fact, the research shows that it is exactly what makes a good leader great um, and talking about it more. What do you like to do for fun? Oh, I like I like to watch TV. I I am a um, reality show junkie, so I will, and I don't watch a ton of it, but I I will watch you know kind of Real Housewives and that kind of stuff. Um, of Beverly Hills, that's the one that I like to watch. But I'm also right now I'm I'm really into the Taste the Nation series with Padma Lakshmi, and I um, and so I take that and I get inspired to cook. So a couple times a week I go kind of crazy and I buy, you know, what the ingredients I want and um, make something unusual yet healthy. And only usually I eat it because it's too healthy or it doesn't look familiar for anybody else. So yeah. I end up eating it for breakfast, lunch and dinner, but I like to cook as well. So that's, and I like to experiment with it. Which is what is the, what TV shows or, or movies do you like? and? And yeah. So. so yeah. So uh, you know, I'm I'm watching the Taste the Nation on um, on Hulu, and I wasn't. I, there's um, there's some new show about arranged marriages on Netflix that I'm gonna oh. watch. <laughs> yeah. If all else fails, I turn on Friends or Seinfeld, and I'm and I'm good. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, uh, those those can never disappoint. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, that's wonderful. And and. Uh, what book are you reading that you've or you've read recently that that you just really so like? I just got a, a new book yesterday and it's called and I have it on my book stand I haven't opened it but it's called letting go and it's called the pathway of surrender and I'm reading the author's name here David Hawkins I believe but um, it was recommended to me from a friend and I think you know in this very chaotic time that we're in and I think about I don't know how long it's going to last and you know um, how can you surrender and let go in the middle of all this and make that a, a habit and a practice so I, I'll, I'll let you know how that goes. <laughs> Um, I tend to be a, a creature of habit, so I find something and then I stick with it for a long time. So I'm right now in a in an omelet phase. So every day I'm eating omelets for lunch. That doesn't mean that's what I make for everybody else, but that's what I eat. So I, I eat based on kind of what my mood and how I feel is. I um, I eat heavy. I'm kind of like plant based, I guess. So I eat a lot of vegetables all the time. Um, I'm, I'm not vegetarian, but I eat, you know, mostly vegetarian and, uh, and I'm, I live in California and I lived in Southern California for a long time. So I got into the vegan and gluten-free and, you know, soy free and dairy free. So I have a lot of stuff that's all free of a lot of other things. <laughs> Um, of those things. So my, I, I was having gluten-free toast for breakfast this morning and I was using oat milk butter. Oh, <laughs> no, wonder milk. Kids are, no wonder and, your kids are not eating. So my daughter was like, gross mom. And I was like, it's yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Don't judge it. You gotta try it, but she wouldn't try it. So I eat kind of weird. I eat kind of, you know, hippie California a little bit. That yeah. way. <laughs> You're a long way from Oklahoma. That's I should true. <laughs>
So uh, well, this is great fun. So uh, it was wonderful. And, and I know you, you have to run and you have things to do. But thank you very much for spending part of your day with us. And thank you, Loki. It was good to talk to you. so much. Uh, Thank you.